How you doing YouTube? Mike here, the Red Eye Guy. How we doing today? Uh, I hope what you all liked that last video and got uh, some pretty good information out of it. All right, today I actually have two uh, two things I want to go over. One is the um, thermal bypass valve location and what needs to be done when you are installing the RUR series Sensei or the older RUR, like the RUR 98I or E. When you don't have a dedicated return line and you're gonna be using the supplied thermal bypass valve. But before we get into that with the mock-up, there is something I would like to go over. When you purchase the new Sensei unit, okay, um, that's, that has the built-in circulating pump, okay, so like the RUR 199. Whether it's propane, natural, interior or exterior you're going to get a supplied wi-fi module the control arm it's inside the box you can also um not put the wi-fi and you can put in the 195t controller which is the pump controller whichever one you use supplied in the box in the instruction booklet Okay, for demonstration purposes, this is not an RUR, but I'm just showing you <laughs> what it would look like. Okay, the instruction booklet is in this plastic. Inside of the instruction booklet, and I'm going to take it out, is a connector. Now, I have had a rash of phone calls and service calls where contractors did not know how to hook up the controller. And I'll grab uh, a mock-up and show you. Inside of the bag is that plug. Two little short white wires, and it says controller cable. Okay, do not connect to 120 volt. It's got a model number on it. If you pull the instructions out, which people have done, because some of the contractors have found it in the box or in the garbage, and just throw the plastic away, you're going to lose this, and it's pretty much camouflaged in there. So, and I'm going to be honest with you, the first Sensei we did, guess what we had to try, because we take the box and use it for garbage. We had to rummage through the box, so even we did it. Okay, it is in the instruction manual. And then in the unit, and, and I don't have a Sensei yet, but I do have a Sensei demonstration box. In the unit... It's going to get plugged in to the bottom of this new control board. There, this is the PC board without dip switches on the new Sensei. But it gets plugged in down here at the bottom. It's the last plug. It fits. It's a one direction, one way direction plug. And let me just see if I can have if I have it on the. Let's see. Oh, here we are. Here's the, see, it gets plugged in right here at the bottom. Now, this is showing multiple. You can do multiples, but if it's just one, two little blue wire nuts to either the Wi-Fi module or to the 195T controller, and it gets plugged into the bottom of the, um, with their new style PC board. And we'll do this as a separate video. I'm going to do the whole thing as a separate video with setting parameters, where it gets mounted, what you got to do. Okay, so that's that. Remember, look for that plug because there's no other way to connect any of the... You cannot wire it in. There's no screws. It plugs in. All right, now, we have, say, um, a unit that you're installing. And again, propane, natural, interior, exterior, doesn't matter. And you do not have a dedicated return line, recirc line you're going to use the interior piping of the house. Supplied in the box is going to be this, it's a Grumforce product, thermal bypass valve. And I already opened it. We, we, we keep them all. We keep a bunch of them, you know, because we do have a lot of dedicated lines or we run the dedicated line, so this is not used. So this is, remember, no dedicated recirc. You're using the piping in the house. So you have this thermal bypass valve. It is directional. The, if you notice, you have all of the 
um, hot in, hot out, cold, cold. So basically it goes, it's a wonder way valve. And I'm gonna show you when we do it on the mock-up. The only way it goes on is with this facing front or with this piece, which makes it flat to the wall and leaves enough room that you can put the speedy nuts back on, gets mounted. So it's one way, it's a one way valve. So it has to go, okay, we're, we're, going, we're going from this, from, from left to right, it's going in that direction. So basically, here's a mock-up of what you're going to find under, the, under a sink. Now, it's going to be put at the furthest, run, which you can figure to be the furthest run of pipe. Now, in our case, it's always the master bathroom. That's always the farthest, and we pick the furthest vanity. So it's going to go underneath. Of, unfortunately, if you have a pedestal, you're going to have to find some place to put it unless the people want to see it. But if, as you can see, it's not the prettiest, but it works phenomenally. All right. First thing you want to do, you know you're going to use this thermal bypass valve. First thing you want to do is from the factory, the unit, and let me grab the book again and get to the tab page, which is the next page here. Okay. Located by the hot water side, right here, you have this Y fitting, which is gonna have this black cap, which almost looks like the filter cap. And you're gonna have this supplied, already installed plug. This plug is there when you have a dedicated return line. What you're gonna do is you're going to unscrew that out of there. Okay, let's put this back. Now, <clears throat> On the RUR-98s, you have to take the front of the panel off. Now, I'm going to just show you this on the Sensei. So, if you have an older that you're installing, an RUR-98, it's going to have one of those white clips like that. And this is going to be clipped right there on the heat exchanger. So, you need to open the front of the tankless to get out the... Filter. Filter is to be installed in the event of using thermal by bypass valve. Then it referred to the instructions. So that's one of the first things. You're making up the union halves, you're putting your valve kits on, and then you're going to take this off, pull out the plug, and install. Give me a second here because it's a tiny little bag. Now, on the Sensei units, this is going to be in the box. Again, go through the box. Go, there's four pieces of styrofoam that hold this in. You know, you got the valve kit, you got the relief valve, you got the control arm, you got a bunch of stuff in there. You're going to then install this filter and screw it back in. Now, make, it, make sure that the O-rings are in there. They, they do give you... I don't know if you can see it. They do give you extra O-rings. One O-ring for here, which goes on here, and one extra O-ring for the actual nut in case you lose it. Again, contractors, if you take the plug off, put the filter, or you don't use it, don't throw these away. Keep them. You never know if someone needs them. It's always good to have them. So that is the two. Now, as you can see, I keep them. This bag is for the filter, but I put the plug in it and we keep it on our truck. All right, so that's that. You got that set, you install it. Now, you're gonna go into the bathroom. You're gonna find a hot water, a cold water speedy valve underneath the furthest sink. Shut off the water, of course, so the water's already gonna be off. Um, let's, get, let's get everything ready here. Basically, you're gonna take this thermal bypass valve and you're going to loop you're going to undo the speedy from the faucet. You're going to tie the cold water in. Now, this bypass valve, these four sides are IPS. They're iron pipe size. And you're going to see what, what I mean in a second. Then you're going to take your hot water and you're going to put it on to the other side. Now, as long as this is going to be flat up against the wall, you're in the right direction. But just look. We always put a nice black arrow 
So there's no mix up. Then you're gonna take your screws and you're gonna screw the bypass valve right to the back of the cabinet. Then you're going to take your new speedies and you're gonna connect your speedies right to this. Oh, I lost that one. There we go. And you're gonna connect your speedies right back. Now, to connect that to the speedies, you're gonna to have to have, like as you can see, you have this half inch uh, faucet nut, which is already built on, but then you got your 3 8, um, you got your 3 8 uh, com compression nut. Now, you can use um, a compression union, which sometimes we do. We use a compression union to tie the speedy back in, or if you have some of those high end faucets, the ones that already have the speedies built onto it that have so basically this is built onto the faucet and you have this 3-8 nut here and as you can see you can't to connect to it what we do is we take half inch female by 3-8 compression adapters and we already know what's on the faucet so this will be made up before we do all this and we screw it on to both of them Of course, it's a heck of a lot easier when it's not screwed to the wall, of course. And then, now this is connected permanently from the factory to the faucet. And now all we do is connect right down onto the bypass valve. Oops. And of course, you don't put your, you don't leave your compression union on. You put this on like this. There we go. And there you go. And that's what it's gonna look like underneath the sink. I mean, if you want, you can get some nice little half inch plastic straps and you can strap that to the wall. I mean, it's taking up a bit of room, but... So basically what the Sensei and what the RUR unit is doing is it's using the piping in the building and it's taking water from the hot, putting it back into the cold. There is, a, there's a, like a, almost like a thermostat in there and it's a check, so no water is going to go back. And it's going to shut down. And then it's going to, the tankless is going to know that. And then it's going to um, uh, stop, you know, with the sensors inside the tankless. <clears throat> Other than that, when you set the controller for on-off cycles, depending on what your customer wants. So, like, most customers want it on at, um, like, around 5 in the morning and off at 10 or 11. They want it back on at, say, 6 and off at 8. And that's, the, that's when the Sensei is going to turn on and off. But then with the thermistors inside of the unit, it's going to turn it on and off. Some people, we, we show up because they're having problems. Or our main thing is um, my, ta my new tankless is, is draining my propane tank. We get there and the pump's on 24 hours. So the tankless is running. It goes on and off, but it's running and it's using all that unnecessary gas. Natural gas, it's being pumped in. Most people don't know about it unless they get a high fuel bill. But down here, Florida, fuel is cheap. Gas is cheap. So that's basically it. Just remember with, no, you got to know if you have a dedicated line, you're not doing anything to the bottom of the tankless. You're going to leave that plug in. If you know you're going to be using the thermal bypass valve, then you will be using the, uh, taking the plug out and putting the filter in, putting it all back in. Okay, as far as filling the system, bleeding the system, getting the system started, that is the next video. We're going to go over that extensively because that is another pretty much main problem is when these new units aren't bled properly and you end up getting a code 63. The code 63 means that this, the pump isn't running, but the tankless will run. It will still produce hot water. It's not like getting a code 10, 11, 12, or whatever, where the tankless shuts down. It's going to run, but it's going to flash. Um, like on the Sensei models, until you hook up the controller, it does come with an MC91 mounted to the front. I don't know if, the, oh yes, here it is. So it's going to come with that controller mounted to the front. And when you go to set the parameters, 
this is going to come up different letters and numbers, and that's what you, and that's another going to be another video. Um, but with that controller, until like you set up the Wi-Fi, but you want to test for hot water, it's going to say 120. But then it's, or well, whatever you set it in the parameters of 140, 135, you know, whatever you set. But just say 120. It's going to show 120. But then in a couple of seconds, it's going to go 63. Then 120, a couple of seconds, 63. If you have the MC uh, 195T controller dash US, in the upper left-hand corner of the controller, and on the, the large number is going to say the temperature. But in the upper left-hand, it's going to say... 63 and it's going to flash and basically the pump's not going to work, but you're still going to get hot water and most of the time um, They it could be a pressure problem, you know where the pump is not getting an, enough pressure and, uh, and well, like I said, we'll go over that but Every single time we have showed up because of that it they, they did not bleed it correctly So we're going to go to a unit that we just installed and I'm going to go through the whole bleeding procedure and if you follow this procedure, so far, knock wood, we have, it has been 100% successful. Okay? All righty. Um, I think we covered everything. Um, if there's any questions, my email is going to be in the description below. Please sh just shoot me an email, and I'll be more than happy to answer. Most of the time, I'm going to shoot back um, with my phone number for you to call me at a certain time. Usually after 6 is when I take the calls um, or make a comment. However it may be. All right. I hope this was very helpful. Um, please um, subscribe to the channel. Um, like the video. Uh, and leave me uh, a comment. And again, I thank you all for the subscribes I've had. And all of the comments. Especially the comments I get. Or the emails I get back. Thank you very much for all of those phenomenal comments and, and, and emails that I get back after I help you. All righty. Um, you all have a safe and productive week, and enjoy the forever hot water. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.